Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back and happy to support you on your journey towards CNE, CNE, CL, or CNE novice success. Our mission is simple, to support every single nurse educator to get certified by NLN or to stay certified, all right? We will be announcing a new series to help you stay connected to the requirements. We're going to be going over those based on NLN information, and we want to support you on your journey to redesignation or recertification as well. For our content today, as well as over the next several weeks, we will be focusing on Boyer's scholarship model. All right, so um, Ernest Boyer published quite a bit of work in 1990 talking about the value of scholarship extending beyond the standard types of scholarship that we think about. There are four phases that he has identified as part of his work. We're going to start looking at application phase. Um, I think that many of us can relate to that as nursing is really a very hands-on application driven practice. We know with our students, uh, pre-licensure especially, a big uh, focus of NCLEX and NextGen is in that area of application as well as the CNE exams, all right? So all of the certification exams um, published by NLN also have a heavy focus on application. So we thought it was appropriate to start there. Let's take a look at our resources. Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing. You're gonna be starting on page eight, looking at a great description of Boyer's scholarship model. But for our purposes in this snapshot, you're gonna be taking a look on page nine. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that right now so you'll be notified every single time there's a new episode. All right, you can also click the bell so you'll be notified right away so there's no delays. We do post a new episode every week, so we don't want you to be delayed in receiving any content knowledge so you can ensure that you're closing your gaps. We are going to take a look in Dr. Caputi's book in chapter seven, and that starts on page 127. You want to make sure you have the second edition of Dr. Caputi's book. We only recommend the most current editions because we know those are the ones that are recommended by NLN. And also those are the ones that exam writers use when they develop their questions. All right. So it's really important that you use the most current content. There is an option to rent Billings and Halstead's seventh edition on Amazon if you choose that option. I've heard really good feedback from educators who choose that route. You also want to make sure if you're an Elsevier shop, if you have a relationship with the Elsevier vendor, that you go ahead and ask them for access to that um, as an educator. Uh, usually they're very kind and will give us access to that um, digital, digitally as well. All right, so that's just a few housekeeping notes. And if we want to go ahead and take a look right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. Um, there's also information, as always, that's listed down in the um, description page of this episode. All right, so you will have some additional links there and some additional content to help you close your gaps. When we look at Boyer's scholarship model, um, th this is really around a call to action and asking the question of how can we better align nursing education, research components, and teaching? Um, he has described four types of scholarship that we must as nursing faculty engage. And we're going to be focusing on application, asking the question of ourselves, how can knowledge be responsibly applied to consequential problems? This was a direct quote from um, Ernest Boyer himself. This, was the, this is the question that is centered around the scholarship model of application. We're going to be focusing on just application today, and then you will continue to stay with us over the next several weeks as we engage in more discussion around all of the phases of the Boyer Scholarship Model. Let's talk about the definition of application of scholarship. First, it is defined as our ability to connect theory to practice through service or leadership activities such as engaging in professional organizations, such as with NLN, community panels, uh, for example, if you're actively involved in American Heart Association or American Cancer Society, and you decide to engage and participate on a panel, that is an exa example of application. Or you can serve on board. So there are lots of different ways that we can demonstrate the scholarship of application. 
Next is service activities. Those that are directly connected to a faculty member's areas of expertise are considered application of scholarship. So let's take a little bit closer look at that specific bullet point. On page nine in Billings and Halstead, you're gonna see in that second paragraph, it reads, for example, in nursing, clinical practice and expertise that result in the development of innovative nursing interventions and positive patient outcomes meet the de definition of scholarship of application. And then if you go up about one sentence above that paragraph, it says service activities that are directly connected to a faculty members of, of areas of expertise warrant consideration as scholarship. Okay, so the content that we pull into all of our webinars or content that we share here is directly connected to the evidence that, that is included in the reference that we cite. Okay, so that's really important to know as you all are closing your knowledge gaps as it relates to the CNE, any of the exams, you want to make sure that you are using evidence based content. All right, that's the best way that we can create a study plan that's going to help us be successful when we sit for the exam. So let's keep going. I'm looking at a couple of other examples. Next is performance of services, specifically looking at those that are going to potentially help develop new knowledge. So think about the role as nursing faculty that we play in engaging students in those service learning activities where they're able to provide hands-on experiences that's going to provide safe patient care and also equip our students with the knowledge that they need to be able to follow the steps and conduct a thorough assessment, be able to interact appropriately using those interprofessional um, communication skills that we teach them about. And then also dissemination of knowledge. That's another way that we can engage in the scholarship of applications such as conducting presentations and publications as well. So these are all great examples of how we can engage in the, the area of scholarship of application. All right, so in our normal fashion, we've got to have a practice question, right? So based on Boyer's model of scholarship, which faculty activity fulfills a scholarship of application? So we have four choices here. I'm gonna go ahead and read them to you. So develop a criteria and reference examination using items written at the application and analysis level of Bloom's taxonomy, that's choice A. Choice B is conducting poster presentation on the impact of utilizing technology to enhance the learning experience. Option C is evaluating a new nursing faculty member to identify developmental opportunities. And option D is pulling together those facts to generate new insights about antimicrobial agents for central lines. You can go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. The correct answer is B, most making a poster presentation um, on the application. And I think I changed the option here, but um, B is correct, uh, the impact of utilizing technology to enhance the learning experience. That would be the best example. And we just talked about different ways, specific examples is what you wanna make sure you're knowledgeable about, okay? So when you sit for the exam, what you're gonna see is not necessarily you know, tech, a written out definition of op application of scholarship. It's more likely you're gonna see some examples of how we as faculty can demonstrate the different phases of scholarship. All right, so that's why we wanna focus on giving you practice questions that's gonna get you in the mindset of what some of those questions may show up as on the actual exam. Now, one tip that I want to make sure you remember as part of our previous um, review that we've had together is when you sit for, when you see a question, you wanna follow what we call a three-part process, okay? And looking at the exam question first is, understanding what the question is asking. Second is, what do you know for sure? And then number three is, are there any options right away that you know are incorrect? All right, so think about that as we're looking at this question. First of all, understanding that this question is asking about the scholarship of application. All right, so you wanna get your head around that first. And then second of all, what do you know for sure about the scholarship of application? Well, what we know is that an example could be presenting um, content because that requires us to apply the concepts, right, that we are teaching about or that we are presenting on. We have to have a solid foundation of knowledge in order to present information. 
All right, so we know that that one sounds great right away, right? And then if you're curious about one that may or may not be close, such as developing a criterion reference examination, what you wanna think about is, is that application, are you able to truly engage in concepts that you may have learned as an educator to be able to do this work? Well, that could be the case, right? Developing a criterion reference examination sounds pretty good. What we do know though about option A is that when you say develop, this is more closely aligned to research, right? The ability to generate new knowledge, or it could possibly be depending on the context or more information that we were given, it could be a, a different area of scholarship. So this one, right, option A is questionable, right? Because it doesn't sound like that we would necessarily be directly applying knowledge that we know about. Um, there could be an inference that we are conducting new knowledge or new research because we're developing a criterion reference examination. All right, and then for C option, evaluating a new nursing faculty, that's not related to application. And then pulling together facts to generate new insights. That's more of the scholarship of integration, right? That's what D would be. So hopefully that helps you kind of walk through some of the rationale as to why one answer would be the best answer and looking at poster presentations as an example of scholarship of application. Again, if you want to go back and take a few moments, um, now that we've walked through the content, we walked through a practice question, we've discussed the rationale, you want to now spend, I would recommend 15 to 20 minutes reviewing content from these two primary resources. Okay, so you can see here, again, for Boyer's model specifically, you're going to focus on chapter one, pages eight through 10. And then for Billings or for Dr. Caputi, chapter seven, specifically looking at page 130 and page 132, box 7.2 and box 7.3. All right, so we hope this content has been helpful. Make sure that you check out our next boot camp, our next monthly boot camp. It's over on our website. We're going to dig much deeper into Boyer Scholarship Model. And we do get this question often. What is the difference between what we do here with our snapshots and what we do with our live review or even our monthly boot camp? Well, we go into a whole lot more detail. So we're just scratching the surface here. All right. So we always like to engage you all more on a deeper level so that we can ensure that you're closing knowledge gaps and that you are only going to sit for the certification exam one time. That is our goal. And do know that we're here to support you until you are successful, okay? So that is a mission that we have as well. It doesn't matter to us if you have to take the exam more than once. Our goal is that you only have to take it more than once. But our ultimate goal is that you are successful. And we're here to support you on your journey. All right, so until next time, this has been Dr. Sellers Educate. We are excited to be a part of your journey. And we will see you next time. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.